Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, Tom Hodson here again in Kokomo, Indiana, in my shop. And it's the 18th of January, and it's like winter outside. But anyway, we're going to redo the last rib of this project. And you can see here, this is some of the ribs we've already made. It's about half of what I've already made. And uh, behind the camera there, you'll see in a minute some more that's going to go in the tail section of this project. And uh, so I thought I'd do another quick video, which would probably pick up on a few improvements, uh, things I figured out along the way after making a couple of dozen of these things. And like I say, this would be the last one. So a couple other things. Uh, for some of the experts, uh, know all the things I'll mention here, but some of the guys that are not quite as experienced. Uh, the thing that's really important uh, is I've got a cup with a perfectly straight side and a perfectly flat bottom, so a stick can scrape the sides and also in the bottom and also in the corner. If you've got a plastic cup that's got a round corner in the bottom and or a ridge around the top or any other ridges in the plastic cup, as you scrape it, there's a boundary layer of resin that'll be in those corners and those cracks that really won't get stirred up uh, really well. And again, we always want to scrape out the stick several times as, you're, as we're stirring it. Uh, the other thing I'm going to do today for right now is we got the two hour resin and the four hour and the six hour resin. And so I'm going to use 50-50 uh, uh, of each. So I don't have to sit here and wait for six hours uh, so that should give me about a halfway between a two hour and a six hour cure time. So I got 200 grams in the cup. So we're gonna bring that up to uh, 220, the fast. Okay. So I don't know if you guys can see the counter here, but uh, that's 220 at the fast and we'll bring it up to 240, which will be the slow resin. And some people use a pump, and again, uh, there's only six different ways of doing this, and this just happens to be uh, the way that I like to do it. And again, using the pumps, uh, uh, you know, some people like that. I've just been doing this for a long, long time by weighing it, and uh, uh, that's just something I'm comfortable with. And sometimes pumps, aren't really accurate with the viscosity of the resin is either really hot or cold. Sometimes uh, the pumps don't pump the proper ratio depending on the viscosity of the, of the resin at that time. So anyway, I'm stirring up here really well. And again, concentrating on scraping the sides with the stick on the bottom with the corner of the stick and the corner of the buck. So that way there's no place for any boundary layer of resin to get. Now since I've put the stick in there, it's got fresh resin on it with no hardener. And I've been stirring it around, so that's the reason we all like to scrape it off so that we, any boundary layer of resin that's adhered to the stick ends up back in the cup. But what I do now is put the stick back in the resin that's been stirred, stirred a little bit, come back and scrape that resin that I scraped off the stick because that could be a little bit uh, weak on on the uh, on the uh, catalyst, so we want to make sure we don't have any soft spots in this. And stirring just a little bit extra is worth it to avoid not having that that problem. So now after this, a couple of times scraping on the stick doesn't hurt. Okay, so what we're going to do is just wet out this. So I just do this. And I like doing this rather than using a brush because, uh, as you can see pretty quick, I will be able to do this much quicker than most people could, could run a stick. You see the puddle in front of the stick, and I vary the speed and the pressure to keep the puddle the width of the fabric in this case. So I get down here, and then I just use the stick to play with it and run it back, watching the puddle so I can get it spread out the full width. And then it gives it a chance to soak into the into the cloth. So it, as I'm doing this, sometimes I may get excessive resin. And if I'm on the second layer, I'll pick it up, put it back in the cup. But right now, it's the resin is soaking into the fabric. 
I'm massaging it as a squeegee, which helps that. You can see the resin piling up here in front of the stick. I kind of monitor that and I can push to this side or to the other side as need be if the edge is not, is, is dry. So right now I've really got excessive resin on, on, the, on the sheet there, you can see. So by doing this really quick a few times, it, it's a quick way of picking the resin up, put it back in the cup. You can see that went pretty fast because we don't want to have too much excessive resin on there even though we're going to put another sheet on top of this, which if you did have some extra resin, it would actually eventually uh, want to soak into the next layer I put on. You'll see here in just a moment. Uh, so this is pretty much all right out. So that was pretty quick. If you try to put that on with a brush, you'd probably still be doing that. Uh, now I found that I can put another layer on here. And as I roll this out, I will take and pinch it or push it away to make it the same width, this width the same as this, so I don't have a single layer of fabric hanging over the edge. And since these were cut on a 45, and we'll talk about that here in a minute, uh, it allows us to stretch it or compress it on width. Now you can see this ends up being longer than this piece. Uh, this piece could have been cut narrower, that's why it's coming up shorter. However, I'll just lay this out like this anyway. We've got an extra, oh, four or five inches here overhang. And that's all right because the next layer in the mold will overlap this, so we won't lose anything. I'll take and pat it down like this. So if we waited here another minute or two, which I don't want to do, you'll start to see the resin soaking up from underneath into this layer. And I'll just add a little bit so we can just keep moving along here. And uh, I just like to stick over a brush. I can move it around quicker or faster and then actually massage it in. And again, as I'm moving along here, uh, and after you do this a few times, you'll get, you'll develop a, a better feel for how much resin to pour on there. And this is going to be a little bit shorter resin. I'll have to add a little bit more. I'm watching it. You can maybe see here, this is a dry area over here. This is wetter. So I'm going to have to add some more on this edge. Probably all the way down here looks dry on that edge. So, you know, I, I tend to do this. Not too worried about getting too much because as I showed you, I can easily pick it up, put it back in the cup very quickly. And uh, so now this edge here is, was a little bit shorter resin, is dry. So if I have a puddle down here, I'll massage it back and forth. I can pull it all over to this side by doing this kind of thing, kind of like a snow plow on a truck, you know, plowing snow. You can move it from side to side and in, I'm also actually forcing it down into the cloth as well. Now what I'll do here, like now, I need just a little bit here. I can see a dry area in this area. So I'll just add a little bit like in here. Let it set for a moment and I'll scrape it. And if there's any excess in there, it'll, it'll pile up and I'll put it back in the cup. So, uh, I kind of like doing this. Uh, some people, they've probably got other ways to do it for them that they develop for themselves. It, it's probably good. This is what I like. And uh, the, the fact that uh, okay, so now what I'm going to do is roll this up. The two layers here. I'll make a little puddle. So we'll take and roll this up like this. So you can see that's gotten kind of narrower. So what I'll do here, we're going to start here. Now as I pull this, it's going to get narrower. And so as we go around the corner, uh, as you'll start to see, uh, it will thin out, get narrower. Now what I'm doing is 
I want this, this edge right at the top of this mold. This distance here, I'm eyeballing. I want to maintain this distance as we go around, and we'll do that by me pulling and stretching this. And at the same time, this area here needs to be shorter than this area. So that will automatically, as you see here, it'll just, it kind of falls right into place. Uh, I will use the back of my hand here, as you, as you watch. I use my fingers to, to control the, the height of this to the top of this mold. And this is getting a little wider right now. So as it is, I will pull it, holding my fingers in the corner so I don't pull this down. Pull the fingers here, pull this out, and then this will start to narrow in here. And so this is the, the distance that I want to maintain all the way around. Uh, so as I'm going, you can see I'm using the back of my hand, my fingers here, uh, to, to push this out, uh, to get the fibers to compress so that the inside lays flat without wrinkles on it. Okay. So continually monitoring this space because we want to maintain this distance as we go around. I can't get in there with a tape measure all the time, but you have to just kind of learn how to judge uh, judge uh, distances or judge uh, 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 dimensions. So I'm just kind of doing that. And if, if this gets a little bit too long, then it'll just be more material to... Uh, have to cut off later and put in the trash. But uh, anyway, so now what I'll do is walk around the table here so I can continue to unroll this. And, and this will probably end up being a little bit short. The last one I made was three inches smaller than this. And the length of this fabric was perfect. This will be a little short, but after laying in multiple layers, then they will overlap them so that uh, uh, it's like plywood. Then, so then we have overlapping layers uh, where where the first layer was too short. So we're about to see here very soon how short this will be. Okay. Now, what's in this particular part, what's more important to me is, is this extra strength on the inside versus the outside uh, flange. So, in this case, I like to continue to keep, keep this tail up high here rather than down low, because uh, that'll make the inside ridge much uh, stronger and it'll be thicker. So, you can kind of see now I've maintained this space pretty even all the way around, which uh, is what we need. Later you'll see when we pull it up, it'll be uh, just about the right space. Okay, so now we're gonna wet out another piece uh, real quick. Uh, we won't bore you with doing all of this. We'll stop later on, but just to watch again, see how, how quick I can wet this whole sheet out and uh, and like I say, there's a lot of guys that's got other ideas and ways, and for them, uh, you know, that's great. This is what I found, what I like. And uh, now since this plastic has already had some resin in it, this, this might stick on there. So now I did mix up 200 grams, and I have since learned that 200 grams will do the first two layers and, and what you see here. It'll be short, so I'll mix up another 200 grams. And uh, while I'm doing that, I just tend to spread this out. It can set in, and, and as we all know, the thinner the resin is laying, the less chance for it to thermally kick off. So I like to spread it out. And while I'm over mixing some more resin, uh, that can soak in. Another 200 grams here. It is 206. So we'll do 
to 26 of, of fast. There's 226. Next, one gram over. That's all right. Now we'll go 46 with slow. There's 46 went over a gram or two. And we'll go to the mixing stick. And again, uh, I want to elaborate on, I'm using paper cups, no wax in it, just straight, plain old paper cups, uh, but having a perfectly straight edge uh, side and a flat square bottom in the corner it is absolutely a must because there's too much of a chance of resin getting caught in those, in like a lot of plastic cups that aren't really that way. You can actually get resin that will not really ever get mixed, uh, that can get caught in those in those corners and once you learn that lesson and it messes up a part then you'll pay more attention to the importance of making sure you got a good thorough mix okay we'll scrape the stick off here all sides because there can be a boundary layer of resin on this stick that doesn't really get even though you stir it fast, it can still not get its proper dose of catalyst. Okay, now this has kind of been wetted out down the center, so this next little run, I'll do it on this side over here since I know I'm going to be short on the side. And you can see the pile here, I just as I'm walking down here, I can do this and do this and, and move the pile to the away from me or towards me as you're going along. And uh, so I'm going to pick up some of this. Surprising, it's kind of like a, how a, a dog licks water with its tongue. You just you get it on the stick, as long as you don't sit there and look at it too long, you can get a lot of it back in your cup really fast. Uh, anyhow. I just need more over here, a little bit towards me, so I'm moving it over. If I leave too much down on the first layer, then it will soak into the next layer of cloth I put on, but then I found that eventually I end up with just too much resin in the, in the part eventually anyway, so I kind of like to keep it somewhat lean, even though I do know it's going to soak up from the bottom. Uh, okay, we'll throw the next layer on, see how that comes out in the end. This is a little bit wider. I like to kind of watch it as I unroll it to keep the edges as close to the piece underneath of it. See, it's gotten a little wider there. And this is going to turn out to be also a little bit longer than the piece under it. When I cut those, I just, uh, sometimes they get stretched out a little bit longer, one from the next as they, as they get cut. So I work it up into that corner there. Okay, so here we go with our puddle. So you can see it piles up. We got really excess on this run, but I'll pick it up shortly. And I don't mind pushing it back and forth a couple times because then it, it, if it didn't get thoroughly soaked in on the first pass, we'll push it back and forth. And, and I can actually put in a lot of down pressure on the stick. I can actually almost 
dry out or push it down to where there's hardly any resin left in it. Uh, and of course, we don't want to do that. Supposedly, the ideal mix is about a 50-50 a by weight resin versus carbon fiber, which is what the experts tell me. And uh, however, I'm not, I'm not that finicky about it. So, but again, we don't want a dry cloth. We want it to have a reasonable amount of resin. And we're about ready to pick this one up. Roll it up. So what we'll do here, since we fell short over there, we'll start at that point and continue around knowing that we're going to always have a gap of this size at the end of each roll because of the, the length really isn't long enough. So I'm just going to overlap here about an inch and we'll just start in and do the same thing. Moving around, unrolling the, the, the roll here. Uh, and like I say, there's other ways of doing this. This just happens to be what I've uh, decided is, works good for me and I like it, gotten used to doing it. And uh, I guess some guys, you could put the cloth in there and then take a brush and try to uh, brush the resin in after you lay the dry cloth in the mold. But I've kind of done that in years past and haven't been as happy with, with doing it that way as this. This tends to be quicker. At some point, if you want to mix your resin for it to kick off faster. You don't want to be spend lots of time uh, doing what I'm doing and then have the resin kick off on you before you get it all all, all, uh, all done. And you see I'm using the back of my hand here. Occasionally I'll take my fingers and run in the corner. That way I can monitor this edge to make sure that it's not going to be short. And uh, it's pretty much uh, monitoring what's going on here, monitoring this distance as we go along. And, and I'm tugging. Uh, actually, if you want to look here, you can see how wide this is uh, compared to what I need here. So as I pull this, if you watch that, this will get much narrower. You see it getting narrower? So I'm kind of judging what I need here and what I need here, and then I'll pull it more or less to control that, uh, the, the space. Uh, that way I'm not gonna cut off and throw away a lot of carbon fiber and resin, which that's all that would happen if this ended up being longer, then I'd need more uh, because the piece would actually effectively be shorter. Anyway, uh, that's uh, what we're doing here. I'm probably thinking if, if I'm boring some of you guys at this point, uh, when I finish this roll, I may uh, do the next one, take a break here on the camera, do the next one, which will be the last layer I throw in here. And, and then we'll turn the camera back on for showing you how I end up putting the rest of this together. But meanwhile, as you can see, uh, now if a person wanted to make this thicker, you just keep adding more and more uh, layers of cloth. Uh, so this is 5.9 ounce fabric, two layers here. It's another two layers that we just put on, which is four layers thick at this point. And I'll put another two layers in on top of this uh, with one single layer, so I'll end up with seven layers of 5.9 ounce cloth total on this. And, and that's what I, uh, my, my finished product is, I'm really happy with that as far as the strength of it and the weight. Uh, so what we'll do is uh, we'll take a break here. I'll lay in 
one more double and one single piece and then we'll turn the camera back on and continue on finishing this so uh, at this point we'll just take a break and I'll finish this so 